What's going on, sports fans? Welcome back to another episode of Sports Talk More. I'm your host, Alex Tillery, a.k.a. Coach Till. And before we get started, you already know it's the Really Bro Moment. And again, my Really Bro Moment is November 3rd. You have to get out and vote. If you don't vote, that man is going to be back in office. So you need to get out and vote November 3rd. All right, with that being said, look, I got a guest here today. This young lady, me and her... Met a couple years ago, it became cool, and I just want to chop it up with her and talk to her. And this is my good friend, Miss Leslie Shaw. How you doing today? Hello, Al. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Don't be acting no shy. She done switched up. She done switched up my football, the basketball. She done got everything switched up on my set. Like, you know, because, you know, she's not a Giants fan. So, you know, it's all good, though. I did. Look, I, it was this way. Yeah. And I she turned got- it this way. Just come in, just eat. If, the, if you know her, you know how she do. She's just going to take over. So it is what it is. It is what it is. So what's going on with you? Nothing. I'm good. I'm good. Um, the weather's nice. I'm glad to be here. I appreciate and you having me. I'm, I'm excited to share my side of the story. Oh, Listen, that's what we're here to talk about. So before we get started, for people that don't know you, um, you can tell me a little bit about yourself, where you're from. My name is Leslie Shaw, as Mr. Al said earlier. (laughs) I was born and raised in the city of Camden uh, till I was about uh, 14 years Mm -hmm. old. So I did, you know, as they say, what what schools did you go to? I went to Atlantic Square. I was at HB for a little bit. Uh, And then back at Atlantic Square Mm -hmm. in in, uh, high school, I went to Hatch Middle. And then they changed the boundaries. And I ended up at Morgan Village my eighth grade year and graduated in 82. And then uh, in 82, I moved to Blackwood. So I'm an alumni of Triton Regional High School in Runnemey, okay. New Jersey. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, and then I uh, went to Camden County College. And then, of course, life happens. Mm-hmm. You know? So we can talk about that, I guess, as we go on, because I see it's more questions. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yes, yes. So did you play any sports in high school? In high school, no. I was, uh, I called myself having my own dance club in high school. So the only sport I did do was basically, I don't know if you want to call this a sport, but was ran track in middle school. That was it. Okay, well, it's a sport. They got Olympics, so they they definitely, it's a sport. So I know you are a teacher. Yes, I am. You are an educator, and that's how we actually met. Yes. Um, at H.B. Wilson, that's how we met. Um, I was running a uh, mentoring program, and she was teaching preschool, and we met. And then we just, just clicked. I remember from when we went to the, the staff meeting in the beginning of the year, and the principal into, into, um, introduced me and Mr. L. Yeah. And you was at the table cutting up. I said, she, she crazy. <laughs> I already know. She at the table cutting up. I said, she crazy already. <laughs> And from there, we just hit it off, and it was it was all good. Yes. So, you have a passion for children. Yes. How did you get to that point? Uh, well, I am a mother mm-hmm. of four children, but my passion is not only for my own, but for you know the little babies. I call them our future, mm-hmm. and. Um, you know, you can, ins- they're like sponges at such a young age that you can really ins- um, instill some very important information in them that could carry them on. And if you do it in a way where they remember, you know, you you plant that mm-hmm. seed for them to continue their journey, you know, um, they, I just look at them as our future mm-hmm. to where they're going to be taking care of us one day. Yeah, I, I remember when I used to go to your class, them kids used to be on point, though. <laughs> I ain't going to lie. Them kids is on point. They used to be in there. Yeah, you, you had that tip-top shape. You and your assistant had them on tip-top shape, though. I ain't going to lie. That's my ride or die, Miss Ruiz. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, so you said earlier you have four children. Yes, I have four children. Um, can you say who they are? Okay, so my oldest, his name is Ernest Grice, mm-hmm. the third, and we call him EJ. He's 30. Um, my second oldest is... She don't like she got a third-year-old, but we don't. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and my second is Julian Davenport, and he's 25, 
and we'll talk about him later. Mm -hmm. And then my oldest daughter is Kimberly Howe. She's 21. And my youngest is Katira Howe. She's 20. Mm -hmm. Shout out to the kids. Yes, up, yes, yes. Shout out to my babies. My so, four babies. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. My four babies. Your four babies. <laughs> yes. So how was it raising kids that's involved in sports? Like Ooh. going to practice, Ooh. things like that. Um, you know what? It, um, it wasn't, I didn't think it was hard. Mm -hmm. Maybe because I was just as much involved as coaching, you know, cheerleading, mm -hmm. as helping to run little league organizations. You know, I helped run uh, Paulsboro Midget Football League when I lived in okay. Paulsboro, because I lived in Paulsboro for 18 years. So I ran, helped run the football league, the basketball league, and, you know, just um, being involved with them. Um, it wasn't, it wasn't that hard. Mm -hmm. My, um, all my children were involved in sports. Uh, EJ played basketball. Julian played basketball and football. He played baseball once, once or twice in his life. Uh, Kimberly, she played uh, basketball and she was a cheerleader. Katera, okay. she played basketball. She played field hockey and she ran track. So nothing but athletes in the nothing house. Nothing but athletes That's in the sure. house. So we kept it moving. So um, raising a son or my daughter, you know, in sports wasn't difficult because um, if you want to do that, you had to maintain your grades. Mm. So that was key to our house. But mm -hmm. as a parent, I felt as though keeping them active in activities it eliminated, um, as I call it, the double worship. Hey, speak your you mind. Know, I yeah. call, you, know, speak it. you know, I want you to focus and don't, you know, keep you on track mm -hmm. so you know i tried to keep you kept, kept trying my goal was to keep him out of trouble yeah so in other words i just kept him busy got you got you got you and sports was one of the ways to go sports dance modeling school did what i had to oh, do sports keep you busy mm -hmm. especially as a parent you running around i remember yes. my oldest daughter was in chile and we was running all over the place that, that, that chair competition. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that didn't last for long but thank god but yeah we definitely i remember us running around Practice here, competition here. Mm -hmm. mm -mm. Yeah. So, we're going to talk about Julian. Yes. So, if y'all don't know, his name is Julian Davenport. He plays for the Miami Dolphins. And mm -hmm. that is her son, her baby, as she called him. Yes. And he is a great young man. I got the chance to meet him and, you know, talk to him and things like that. But, the question I wanted to ask you is, when did you realize, oh, oh, okay, when did you realize he had the potential to go pro? So, um, I would say, I wouldn't say exactly um, realizing that he was going to go pro. Um, what happens is as he was growing up, you know, people used to always say, he big, he big, he big. Oh, he going to the league, he going to the league. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, if it's the Lord's will, mm -hmm. then let it be done. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in high school, I would say around um, near the end of football season, we started seeing uh, college recruiters coming. And, you know, as, as I say, like when it comes to children, it takes a village mm -hmm. to help raise your children. And it takes a village to help manifest different things so you know he it, coach took him to I believe it was University of Maryland for a college visit and then my oldest son and Julian's dad took him to Fordham and then we went to Bucknell you know so we started doing these college visits mm -hmm. but you know how they have um also the training camps like yes. the the Football camps combines. they have. Mm -hmm. No, not the combines, like the little football, oh, okay. little football camps. So we went to Temple, and that's where we found out that, because like I said, he played both sports. He played basketball and he played football, mm -hmm. and we thought he was going to lean more towards basketball, but apparently he said he did his research mm -hmm. and he told us when we was at Temple University that he chose football over basketball and said his his chances to make it pro was better for football. Absolutely correct. So he put that in his mind and then he started working towards it. So when he graduated in 2013 from Paul's Bar High School, mm -hmm. he went to Bucknell University. Mm -hmm. And his, we went down to the movement and he told his dad, 
my goal is to start. And he came out starting all four years That's of college. Sure. He played all 44 games. Even one game, he had 102 temperature. Mm. And he still came out for one play, went back and played. With a, uh, you know, he was sick. But um, uh, I guess around his junior year of college, that's when we heard that teens were starting to look at him and stuff like that. And then the phone started ringing off the hook from all <laughs> these agents. And, um, you know, we heard, like, we listened to so many different agents and his potential and mm -hmm. his drive and all that. And then after a while, next thing we know, senior year was over and he was getting ready for the Reese's Senior Bowl game mm -hmm. and then the combine and then the draft. Yeah. And then it happened. And where did he go? He went to the Houston Texans. Ah, Houston Texans. And he was drafted in the fourth round. That's right, that's in, right. In Houston Texans, yeah. So the other question I wanted to ask you, that's kind of, I guess, conflicting to that, not really conflicting, but did you ever prepare him if he didn't go pro? Yes. So anybody who knows me know, education is key. Mm -hmm. I can use myself as an example. Um, I promoted to my children to get your education now. So I use myself as an example. I started having children at the age of 22. At that time, I didn't even have my associate's degree. Mm -hmm. And um, I worked in Atlantic City and took care of that my one child, my oldest, and then I you know, I became pregnant with Julian, mm -hmm. and at that time, I still didn't have any degrees, and uh, it was difficult. So, you know, I was on welfare for like, what, three months, and then by that time, I enrolled back in school. I took the two classes I needed to get my associate's degree at mm -hmm. Camden County College, and then I was a paraprofessional. I drove a school bus, but then I started seeing that my income wasn't there. Mm -hmm you know, to um, be successful or what I wanted to do. I was a teacher assistant in 97. Mm -hmm. And then in 2000, I enrolled back at Rowan University and I worked on my bachelor's degree. So I went to school full time, I worked full time and I took care of four children. Mm -hmm. So I did what I had to do, which leads to me promoting, and my children saw my journey. Mm -hmm. So my journey was education is key. So it wasn't more or less we're going to focus on the sports because I didn't care about um, him going pro. Mm -hmm. My goal was, and I told the agents or whatever, like he didn't have an option to say, oh, um, I'm not going to do my senior year. I'm coming out and I'm going to try to go pro. He didn't have that option. Mm, that's good. The option was get your degree. If something happens, you have something to fall back on. Mm -hmm. So that's the key in my house. I don't care how many sports you play. I don't care if you went to modeling school. I don't care. I wanted them to get a degree. They see my journey. Get your degree and have something to fall back on. I'm, I'm itching over here because I'm like, that, <laughs> that, is like, that was perfect because a lot of, you know, I, I, I deal with kids as athletes and, I, you know, parents that have athletes that can potentially go pro. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, like you just said, like if they don't go pro, do you prepare them for that? Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents don't prepare their kids for that. Mm -hmm. If they don't go pro, then it's like, the kids are just in the wind. Right. And they don't you have nothing to fall back on. You can't, you can't, you gotta have a backup plan. Always. You have to have a Always. backup plan. Education is key. If, if you don't want to go to college, then seek a trade. You need, you know, find something that you enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but education is key. You can get a certification in a trade, mm -hmm. you know, but, you know, we all have these dreams of who we want to be, you know, and if it's not leading that way, or if it did, but it didn't last, mm -hmm. what's your backup plan? Exactly. Exactly. I, I agree totally. I'm, I'm just glad you said the way you said it, because... That is so key, that education was key in your house. So if he went pro or not, he had something to fall, to fall back, back on. on. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, so what were some of the values you taught him, you instilled in your children? Not just Julian, but... All you, of them? Yes. Oh, goodness. Um, well, one, 
the number one thing is faith in God, mm -hmm. you know, trust, um, always remain humble. Yeah, I'm good. Keep going. I, I got <laughs> something for that. Go ahead. Always remain humble. Appreciate the people around you. Um, don't be malice. Be moral, ethical. Um, and then ju you just know who you are. Mm. That's deep. Mm -hmm. That's deep. I'm itching. Again, I'm itching. <laughs> because all the things you said, I see it in this young man. Mm -hmm. From the first day when he came to the school, the first day I met him, he came by the school in his off season. And then I could go back to two years ago mm -hmm. when you, he hooked us up with tickets to go see the game. <laughs> now, I'm going to give you a quick story. We're Giants fans. Me, my wife, my daughter. Shia was like, oh, I was like, yo, they playing. What's up? She was like, I'll see what I could do. I said, okay, cool. She called me. We could fly free, so we was out. She called me like, listen, I could get, we on a plane. We, we in Houston. We made it there. We had other stuff going on. We was like, we going to the game. Get to the game. Unfortunately, the Giants did win that game last, the two years ago. But what we really took out of that was Julian. Mm. I mean, my daughter fell in love with him. She, she fell in love with the Texans. She fell in love with Julian. Like, every game after that, she want to see where Julian's at. He's mm -hmm. on the field, what he's doing. Mm -hmm. She got a picture with him and Deshaun Watson. It's a post on her wall I made for her. Awesome. I mean, <laughs> any, like, she became a Houston fan. Mm -hmm. Like, even so, like, a couple weeks ago when the Giants were losing, she took a Giant jersey and put her Houston shirt on. Oh. So, like, she really <laughs> fell in love with them. And now, with him being Miami, she's always talking about Julian, Julian, Julian. So I just want to, again, thank you publicly for, and him, Julian, if you get a chance to watch it, thank you so much for that. Like, that really changed her life. That really gave her, just, it brightened her day. It you know what? Day. At the end of the day, when I look at children, it's not about us. Mm -hmm. It's about, you know, making that impression mm -hmm. in their lives. And that's how, you know, I feel about education. Yeah. Education, you know, making that impression showing them that you know because when when you hear about athletes mm -hmm. let's be real mm -hmm. some are cocky mm -hmm. some are very malicious yes. in doing things you know i didn't raise my children to be malicious and arrogant mm -hmm. i did not raise them to be that way i re i raised them to be appreciative of mm -hmm. the things that they have received in life because mm -hmm. you know you can be blessed 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 and just like that, if you want to, you want to be mean. God can say just as quick as I gave it to you, I can take it away. I mean, I, I mean, like when you said humble, I was just like, yeah, I definitely. I mean, he's so mild mannered, just mm -hmm. everything. Even like, even at the end of the game when we was leaving, we went and had sit and had dinner with everybody with the team, and then him just sitting there chilling. And then when we walked out the back way, and you had the fans that wait in the back, mm -hmm. and the lady had a quilt, and he went over. And he mm -hmm. signed it for her. Mm -hmm. She was just screaming and she was like so <laughs> amazed. I was like, that was so dope. Mm -hmm. That was so dope. So I really, that, that was definitely, for me, I mean, I've, I've been around celebrities. I've been around athletes. But that was like one of the best experiences I had. Because so. yeah, he could have said, man, you got a Giants jersey. Yeah, man, I ain't yeah, doing exactly. that. Exactly. Like, He's yeah. like, hey, how you doing? You know, yeah, yeah, he that's just how he is. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. Mm -hmm. So. How did it feel to see him live out his dream? Surreal. Mm. Surreal. Because, you know, as a mother, you know, in the house, basically it was just me in the house with mm -hmm. all my children. So, you know, when you're in the house and you see them start, you see their dreams starting mm -hmm. to manifest. Mm -hmm. And you see, and you just sit back and be like, wow, yeah. this is really, this really happened. Mm -hmm. You know, it was surreal. It's surreal. It's mm -hmm. exciting. I'm sure. I, I can only imagine. <laughs> I can mm -hmm. only imagine. So how was you his first professional game? How, like, what was you doing? Where was you at? His first professional game, mm -hmm. as a matter of fact, just came up a month. <laughs> <laughs> we went to Houston. Mm -hmm. It was my youngest daughter and myself. And, um... Anybody know, look, my, my children don't like sitting next to me in the games anyway because they sound loud. Um, I'm not that quiet person at the game, 
they turn the music on, I'm dancing, I'm hollering, I'm screaming, you know, just shouting, shouting mm -hmm. them out. I'm That's sure. what I do. I'm sure. That's what I I'm do. Sure. I'm sure. <laughs> That's what I do. Also, but yeah, um, it was exciting. It was real exciting to be there, you know. You was like, I'm not missing this. No, no of we was out. We was out, and then you know, because he was in Houston. After that, you know, when I couldn't get out there, mm -hmm. you know, I'm watching games on TV. It's like I'm screaming. So I, could, I, I, I was like, I know my neighbors is like, who is she screaming at? <laughs> <laughs> and screaming at TV, standing in front of the TV. Mm -hmm. So it's exciting to watch him play. I'm sure. I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. So for any parents or that have a kid that may be potentially going pro, any type of advice you would want to give them? So for a mother, mm -hmm. mother, father, you know, couple together, um, if your children have that potential, mm -hmm. don't discount the potential. Don't discount it. Um, encourage them, be with them, but at the same time, you want to work towards having that backup plan. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, um, as we can say, that may be their dream, but... A lot of times in that type of environment, mm -hmm. one situation could change that. And, you know, we're talking a broken leg or mm -hmm. any type of injury. Yeah. So um, you want to encourage them to go for their dreams. Yes. But at the same time, you want to encourage them to have a second dream, a backup plan. And then the other advice is be a support person. Mm -hmm. Always send like me. Um, I always send an encouraging word. You know, um, anybody know scripture? I'm like Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. Mm -hmm. You know, my that's favorite my ones. Philippians four thirteen. Oh, that's both of my wives. Let me find out. You and my wife. Y'all be reading the Bible together because she, she like both of those. those that's are my, both favorite my favorite scriptures. They two of my favorite scriptures, and I'm always sending something um, to my children. Um, the don't quit poem, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, you can have that dream. We're not telling you not to, mm -hmm. but be their biggest fan, their biggest supporter. And, you know, it takes a village. So yeah. accept the, the uh, mentoring, mm -hmm. you know, accept the other people out there. You know, now you got some people who's about themselves, but check, make sure... Keep your eyes open. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes open when it comes to your children. Because yep. everybody don't have... Their best intentions. Yep. Right. Everybody don't mm -hmm. have their best intentions. So number one is be supportive. Okay. Supportive. And don't downgrade. Don't downgrade them. You know, be supportive and just show them. You know, show them, okay, this can happen. But follow these steps and plan. That's good advice. Yeah, I heard it here. It's Leslie Shaw. So, again, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thank you for it. having me. Not a problem at all. Don't forget, guys, to like, comment, and subscribe so you can get the alerts for the upcoming shows. And before I leave, I always leave you with a quote from Malcolm X. And it says, education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Till next time, people.